There are an estimated 10 quintillion insects on our planet, but I prefer to think of them as 10 billion billion tiny chemists. Although no bugs are members of the American Chemical Society yet, that doesn't mean they don't get a reaction out of us. Stick around for some amazing facts about three creepy crawly chemists. Hey everyone, Matt here. Let's start with bombardier beetle butts. Hidden within the beetle's rear end is a chemical weapon that beetles spray on would-be predators. Scientists recently used x-rays to reveal exactly how the beetles control this biochemical defense. The bug stores some of its chemical munitions, like hydrogen peroxide and p-hydroquinones, in a reservoir chamber. When threatened, a beetle's muscles contract to squeeze a tiny droplet from its reservoir chamber into its reaction chamber. Here, a reaction produces p-benzoquinones, which are the irritants, and enough heat to vaporize water. This vapor causes pressure to build in the reaction chamber, pushing the noxious spray out. Once the spray stops, the bombardier beetle can reload its reaction chamber and fire again. Some beetles spray as many as 700 times per second. Coming in at number two on our list of chemically creative insects is the fall armyworm with its defensive digestive tract. These militant larvae can move from field to field, chowing down on maize, wheat, and rye. These crops have built-in pesticide molecules called benzoxazenoids, but the plants usually store them in a more benign form, attached to a sugar called beta-D-glucose. Not Billy D. Williams, you understand. Beta-D-glucose. When a plant senses that bugs are getting their grub on, it secretes an enzyme that cleaves the sugar off, exposing the toxic compound. But fall armyworms manage to out-chemistry the plants. They use enzymes in their own guts to reattach the sugar, but essentially they put it on backwards. This means the plant enzymes can no longer chop it off. Advantage, armyworm. Lastly, we come to tawny crazy ants, or raspberry crazy ants. Seriously, that's what they're called. It's like Prince named them. Now, you'd have to be crazy to take on fire ants, but that's exactly what raspberry crazy ants do on the regs. Fire ants not only have a size advantage, but they sting with a poison that burns like hot fire. You'd think the tawny crazy ants would be dying horrible, horrible deaths. But last year, researchers showed that if the tawny crazy ants are exposed to fire ant venom, they just excuse themselves and rinse off with their own poison, formic acid, which neutralizes the burning venom. Go on, brush your shoulders off. That's all for this Speaking of Chemistry. Be sure to check out the great stories by Jillian Kemsley, Carmen Drawl, Sarah Everts, and Bethany Halford that inspired this episode. To read more articles like these, head to our website and check out the Critter Chemistry Collection. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and share.